amen and good morning. It's good to see you. How many of you got to come to the breakfast yesterday? Well, those of you that didn't got your hand, boy, y'all missed some good food. Country ham, eggs, grits, biscuits, bacon, sausage, red eye, I mean. All the stuff you're not supposed to eat. But it was all good. I just want to say thank you for all the ones who made yesterday possible. Y'all did an awesome job, so uh, thank you so much for your help. So we really appreciate what you guys did, okay? I want to do that before I forgot it. So thank you so much. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, and I pray that uh, we'll just have a time of worship together today. This is a very special Sunday. We're doing the Lord's Supper, and the Lord's Supper is the sermon, folks. That's what it's all about. It's all about what He has done for us. So we want to welcome you if you're visiting with us. Thank you for coming and being a part of our service today. And also uh, those who will join us by YouTube, we appreciate you and may God bless you. Okay, let's pray together. And who is praying this morning? Glenn, where are you at, buddy? Well, good morning. Not only did we have good food yesterday, but we had a wonderful speaker that y'all missed. Uh, Colston, I want to thank you for those words of encouragement. Good job. <laughs> Maybe so. Okay. Well, our first hymn this morning is hymn number 460. Let us break bread together. We'll sing all three verses.
our next hymn this morning is hymn number 463. I will remember thee. We'll sing verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> Father, we thank you today that, Lord, we have the opportunity to bring back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Father, your word says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. So, Father, we just bring our gifts to you. Father, pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much, choir. Tell you what, let's, uh, did everyone that needed one of these get one of these communion? If you didn't, raise your hand very quickly, please. Where are our ushers at? If you'll raise your hand again so that, just stay, just Keep them up, okay? Okay. All right. Everybody have one now, okay? All right. Tell you what. There is a little thin piece of paper. Take that so you can undo the bread, okay? The wafer. And go ahead and take that out and put it on the pew or beside you. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and open the other one. Hopefully next time we will get back to uh, how we can normally do the Lord's Supper. Uh, so, yeah, me too. I'm, I miss it so much. So, okay, well, uh, for the last month or so at least, we have been looking at the cross. We've been looking at Calvary. We've really been looking at the Lord's Supper. We just didn't call it that. Calvary, that's, that's the Lord's Supper. That's what the Lord's Supper means is what Jesus Christ did on Calvary, where Jesus paid the price for you and I. All the Gospels teach us about the Lord's Supper and the fact that they came together and they celebrated the Lord's Supper. Just as we've come today, they were brought together, the congregation, well, just the disciples at they were brought together. But we as a congregation today, we've come to celebrate the Lord's Supper. You know, Jesus said with desire, I've desired to eat this with you. You know what he was saying? It's a celebration. We, we celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for us. We thank Him. We, we commemorate what has taken place. We, we look to the cross and we look and see because the Scripture says that it was during this Passover time when they would kill the Passover and there Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. 
He talked to them about the bread, which represents the body. The body that was given for you and I. And several weeks ago, we looked in Isaiah on how the Messiah had given his body for you and I. And then we've seen in several weeks about how he has shed his blood for you and I. That's Calvary. That's, that's the cross. That's the message. And it's designed to communicate this Lord's Supper when we partake of it today. That's what it means. So I pray in just a moment as we take the Lord's Supper that you will think about what God has done for you. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. When you partake, think about what I have done for you. The scripture says, as they were eating, that Jesus took bread and he blessed it. Benny, will you bless the bread this morning, please? The bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that was given for you and I. The scripture says not a bone of his body was broken. A perfect sacrifice for you and for me. Take and eat. Scripture says, likewise, after the bread, that he took the cup and he blessed it. When we think about the cup, we think about the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when we partake of the cup, what we are saying is, I believe in what Jesus did. That he died on the cross for me. And he shed his blood for me. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a Savior we have. Who would take our place on the cross. Passover. Jesus said, take and drink.
mentioned earlier that last three or four weeks we have looked at the cross. And the next three or four weeks we're going to be looking at it again. The Lord's Supper ought to be the focal point of the Lord's Supper. That's why I've tried for many years to let it be the focal point. Try not to preach a lot on the Lord's Supper because it is the message itself. The bread and the cup speaks to us of the gospel that Jesus gave his life for you and I. That's the message. That's Calvary. That's the love of God that was shed upon you and I. As we close today, and I know it's short, normally we get to pass it out. We didn't do that today. Think about what he's done for you. Think about the cost. Think about what you have. Think about what he deserves. He deserves it all from me and from you because he gave everything for you and I. Invitation is very, very simple today. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you today to receive what Jesus has done for you. He died on the cross. He rose again. And the Bible says if you believe in him, you can be saved. You put your faith in what Jesus has done on the cross by dying and being raised from the dead. You can be saved. That's the invitation to those who've never been saved. It's also an invitation uh, to others today. We've had people through the years who have been saved, but were never baptized. So that's an invitation. Today. Maybe you've been saved, and, but you've never followed the Lord in believer's baptism. That's an invitation this morning. Or maybe you're here this morning, and uh, you're a member of another church, but you believe this is where God would have you to serve. The invitation is open to you. So as we stand and sing our invitation hymn this morning, I invite you to come if there's a need that you have. Let's stand together, please. Our invitation hymn this morning is hymn 305, Jesus Paid It All. Johnny Glass, it's Louise Andrews' nephew, passed away this morning. Are there others that we need to pray for this morning or add to our prayer list? Curry family. The Curry family. 
Curry. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else? Wow. Okay. Well, let's pray. And as you leave today, remember what Jesus has done for you. Worship him. Celebrate what he's done for you. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today. And Lord, to be able to worship. And Lord, we thank you today for this Lord's Supper that you have given to us. Where Lord, we can come and we can celebrate. We can remember what you've done for us. Lord, thank you so much for giving your life that we might have life and life everlasting. Lord, I pray for this family that has been mentioned. And Lord, I know there's others. Father, Lord, we just lift them up to you. Father, thank you for our time together today. We ask these things now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. And next we will continue our series out of Isaiah chapter 53. <laughs>